This 97-ton vessel is no ordinary ship. It's a floating science lab, and it's about to embark on a very important mission. The ship is the University of Miami research vessel Walton Smith. For the next two weeks, it will be the home to a crew of five and a research team from universities across America, the University of Georgia, UNC Chapel Hill, the University of Southern Mississippi, and UC Santa Barbara. The Walton Smith captain, Sean Lake, has over a decade of experience as captain and first mate of this very ship, but he's never had a mission like this one. He hasn't been home since March. We are 190 by 35 by 10. The research team includes several dedicated research assistants, mostly graduate students and postdoctoral scientists. The ship's crew and research team love their job, and they will work day and night on this mission, but despite their passion, they would all prefer that this time their work wasn't necessary. But they know that the research conducted on board this ship could provide crucial information to help us understand the far-reaching consequences of the biggest man-made environmental disaster the world has ever known, the Deepwater Horizon blowout catastrophe. Dr. Samantha Joy, a renowned marine scientist from the University of Georgia. This is already the second cruise she's been involved in since the BP oil disaster began. We're going to do CTDs at all these sites unless we see something remarkable. Um, and, and if we get into a really good oil slick, we, sh we should stop and get some surface samples. From but the slick. Gulf of Mexico is not new to her. For 15 years, she has been studying the effects of petroleum seeping naturally from the deep reservoirs of crude oil and gas under the Gulf of Mexico through the sediments and onto the floor of the Gulf. But although Dr. Joy begins this voyage in just the same way as the many others she has led into the Gulf, she knows that this is not an ordinary trip. There, there's, there's not a lot that we can do to, to fix this. Um, the, the oil and gas are in the water. Um, particularly dispersed oil is an issue because you can't, you know, you can, if the oil is on the surface, you can skim it off, you can burn it. Even if it gets on a beach, you can clean the beach up. It's a bad, bad thing, but you can clean it up. Um, when it's dispersed into the water and these little um, tiny particles, they're not so tiny that you can't see them, you can see it, um, but there's no way to clean it out. While she readies the research vessel for the long ride to the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, she is aware that despite all her wealth of experience dealing with the effects of oil in the ocean, she's never seen anything like this. The Gulf of Mexico system has been seriously perturbed by this event. And it, I, I mean perturbed in that it's been altered. It's. It's not anything that you can even compare a natural seep to. So there's a lot of oil and gas seepage in the Gulf of Mexico. About a thousand barrels of oil a day naturally leaks out of the bottom, but that's spread out over the entire surface area of the Gulf. And what you've done now is make a focused input of oil and gas in a tiny little area, and then that's spreading all over the place. The cruise leaves from the city of Gulfport, Mississippi for their destination, 100 miles away. Their target is near ground zero of the BP blowout some 50 miles from Venice, Louisiana. And this research cruise is far different than any other Dr. Joy has led into the Gulf. On this trip, she and the team of researchers and assistants will determine the chemical composition of a large, deep oil and gas plume, as deep as 3,600 feet in some areas at its deepest, 2,400 feet at its shallowest, and as long as 20 nautical miles and up to 3 nautical miles wide. It's by far the largest oil and gas plume she's ever seen, and it's probably 100 times larger and in the opposite direction, horizontal rather than vertical, than any natural seep feature she's encountered. My first cruise was in 1994, I believe, um, and it was to a brine site about 60 miles from where the oil spill was happening. 
So, so yeah, we've, we've done a lot of work looking at the effects of natural seepage on microbial activity and, and even our water column signatures. Um, but there's nothing natural about the features that we're finding now. They're, they're, they contrast in many, many ways to, to natural seepage. The original oil and gas plume was discovered on a cruise to the Gulf aboard the research vessel Pelican some two weeks before. The primary research mission of the Pelican cruise was to assess the impact of the oil and gas on sediments deep in the Gulf. However, having discovered a deep water oil and gas plume, an emergency grant from the National Science Foundation allowed Dr. Joy to return to study the oil and gas plume in more depth. I contacted folks at NSF probably two or three days after the oil spill started um, with a question, you know, would they be interested and willing to fund some rapid response work to get out there and look at deep water communities. A lot of the scientific effort initially focused on coastal systems, um, but they were very enthusiastic and I was funded by the biolog biological oceanography and the chemical oceanography uh, programs jointly uh, to, do, to, do this, to do this cruise. It takes approximately 11 hours for the ship, traveling at a speed of about 10 knots, to reach the first research point after departing Gulfport. In order to maximize the cruise's productivity, the researchers use this time to make crucial preparations for their first experiments en route and to contemplate the sheer magnitude and importance of the task before them. For us to be out there researching, trying to not only solve the problem, but to better understand the problem and how it happened just felt so rewarding. This cruise will be anything but a joy ride. You know, I wasn't really sure what to expect. It's, it, I'd done a little bit of preliminary work in the lab the Sunday before we went out, trying to understand what the consistency of the oil might be, how it might affect my equipment. And uh, it was just really hard to, to know what to expect until we got out there. The entire team had to undergo specific hazardous materials training due to the nature of the substances they will encounter in the Gulf. So we're going to do a series of six stations. Um, they're all two miles, two nautical miles from ground zero. They're about two nautical miles apart. The goal of this mission is to determine the chemical composition of the deep water oil and gas plume, to see just how much oil is there, and crucially, to see for the very first time how much gas is present. If there, if there are other features, I would they, they tend to show up about starting here, two miles away. So, After the 11-hour trip from Gulfport to Ground Zero, the Walton Smith arrives at 6 a.m. in the morning. As the sun rises, the research crew is greeted by a flotilla of ships in the area. When we return, the crew begins its research in earnest as they search for the deep water oil and gas plume first discovered three weeks ago and to finally see the true magnitude of the environmental disaster confronting the planet's ninth largest body of water.